Hey guys, so today we are going to discuss about robot coordinates and we will discuss the different type of robot coordinates and how they are represented using diagrams. Then we will discuss each one of them in detail. So first of all we have the Cartesian coordinate or it is also known as the rectangular or the gantry coordinate system. Now in a Cartesian coordinate system we have three prismatic joints which is represented by 3P. That is this is a diagram for a Cartesian coordinate system. That is over here we can see that we have three prismatic joints. That is this is your first prismatic joint. This is your seven pr second prismatic joint and this is your third prismatic joint. So guys this is your Cartesian coordinate system, Cartesian robot coordinate system and this is how it is represented using a robot. Now secondly we have a cylindrical system that is it is given by PRP. By PRP we mean that we have two prismatic joints that is why we have written two times P and we have one revolute joint which is represented by R. As you can see that the robot coordinate system will have two prismatic joints and one revolute joint for positioning the part plus revolute joint for orientating, orienting the parts. What they mean by this is that this is your revolute joint that is this is R. This is your prismatic joint and this is also a prismatic joint. Say this is P1 and this is P2. Now the revolute joint is for positioning the part and also orienta orienting the part that is this is this can rotate that is a revolute joint can rotate whereas a prismatic joint can only move backwards or it can either move forward as you can see by the arrows which are represented over here whereas a revolute joint can rotate uh, rotate in a certain angles which are designated by the robot coordinate system. Now thirdly we have the spherical robot coordinate system which is given by P2R. Now what we mean by P2R is that we have one prismatic joint and two revolute joints which is given by 2R. That is we have one prismatic and two revolute joints for the positioning part and plus the additional revolute joints for orientation. Now let us see with the help of a diagram. Now guys this is our revolute joint 1. Sorry. This is our revolute joint 1. This is our revolute joint 2 and this is your prismatic joint P. So what they mean by uh, this is that they have two revolute joints and one is for positioning the part that is this is for positioning and we have this R2 for the orientation of the part. That is here we will be able to rotate the base part and here the arm or the manipulator part arm can be rotated. Now using this prismatic joint that is P we can move this uh, this part of the manipulator that is say A and B part either up or down depending on whether we are moving we are stretching the uh, manipulator arm or we are retracting it so these are the three joints in a spherical coordinate system now we have an antriculated or anthropomorphic anthropomorphic uh, robot coordinate system that is which is given by 3r and by 3r we mean that we have three revolute joints as you can see this system this is articulated So over here we will have three revolute joints that is this is will be this will be R1, this is R2 and this is R3. So here we do not have any prismatic joints here only rotation is possible. That is we will be able to rotate the base part over here the this joint that is say J, uh, J1 and this joint over here that is say J2. And these can be rotated as shown by the arrows in the figure. Now the last part uh, or we have the uh, we have the SCARA robot. Now in a scalar robot we have <coughs> two or three revolute joints that are parallel and allow the robot to move in a horizontal plane. That is over here you can see that you will have two to three revolute joints and the robot will be able to move in a horizontal plane and plus an additional prismatic joint will also be there. Now let me explain it to you with the help of this diagram that is this is for a scalar robot. And the full form for a scalar robot is selective compliance assembly robot arm. And this is important and you should remember the full form of SCARA robot as is the most commonly used robots and they are commonly used in assembly operations. Now in this diagram we can see that we have one revolute joint over here that is this is R1. We have another revolute joint that is R2 and the third revolute, jo revolute joint given by R3 and lastly we have a prismatic joint over here. Now as you can see that this uh, robot can only move in the horizontal direction that is in the plane like this. Either it will go left or it will go right. That is, I'm talking about this whole manipulator arm. Either it will go to the left or it will go to the right. But it cannot go up or down. Now, why is that? Because we can see that there is no prismatic joint over here. 
at this joint which will be able to move this which would have been able to move this robot either up or down we only have a prismatic joint at the end effector which will only be able to move the end effector up or down but our revolute joints uh, will surely help us in order to rotate our uh, manipulator in any which way but only in the horizontal direction now guys these are the five robot coordinate systems which we have discussed now let us see that how they will be further used or how they will be represented using a diagram that is we will now discuss their workspace now guys we will discuss each of these in detail and we will also see their workspace that is first of all we will see for the cartesian plane that is or the cartesian coordinate system now in this it will move in a rectilinear motion as we have three prismatic joints over here which is given by 3p as we saw earlier that is over here we have the three prismatic joints over here now you will see that the uh, rectangular box is formed as its workspace because this is a first prismatic joint which will move in the x direction the second prismatic joint will move in the y direction and the third prismatic joint will move in the z direction so we have three prismatic joints which will move in all the three directions uh, which will help us form this rectangular box and this rectangular box or we can say this is also called as its workspace so this is what the cartesian coordinate system is used for now we have the cylindrical part now in cylindrical part we have <coughs> a revolute joint a prismatic joint and again a prismatic joint that is we can see it from here that is prp now the, let us see the workspace for the cylindrical coordinate system now in a cylindrical coordinate system we have prp that is first we will have a prismatic joint then we have a revolute joint then we have again a prismatic joint now let us see where the revolute joint is as you can see that theta is written over here so this will be our revolute joint as this will help us rotate in the direction of the arrows as given in the diagram and then we have a prismatic joint which will either help the uh, robot arm or the manipulator arm to move up or move down that is this will move in the y direction which is given by p1 then we have another uh, prismatic joint given by p2 which will help us move in the z direction so now if you see this whole uh, manipulator and if you rotate it by the given joints the workspace that will be we will get will be the of the shape of a cylindrical shape that is this will be the shape of the workspace which we will get on rotating this arm configuration or the manipulator now this is what we will we, uh, we will see now let us see the different the other uh, coordinate system that is the spherical coordinate system that is in the spherical coordinate system we have <coughs> two revolute joints and one prismatic joint see this is the revolute joint one that is given by theta and this is the revolute joint two which will move by phi as given over here that is this is r2 and this is a prismatic joint given by p our prismatic joint will move in the x uh, in the z direction as we can see from the diagram and our revolute joint r1 will move theta angles which will be rotated either anti clockwise or clockwise and then uh, which will move in the horizontal direction only and then we have r2 which will also help the manipulator arm either to move clockwise or anti clockwise and it will help us move in the vertical direction so this is the difference between the two revolute joints and the workspace which will be formed by rotating this manipulator arm will be given by a spherical shape that is this is the shape of the workspace that you will get now let us come to the fourth uh, coordinate system or we can say the revolute coordinate system or we can also say the uh, articulated part now in this we have three revolute joints that is uh, either we can have a revolute joint or we can also have a prismatic joint now let us see that what we had seen earlier let us refer to that that is we also had a 3r revolute system in which we have uh, three revolute joints in the articulated part so let us see what kind of workspace will be formed by this articulated part that is in this we have 3r that is three revolute joints so this is r1 this is r2 and this is r3 so these are the three revolute joints which will be used in this manipulator arm in order to find out the workspace that is this will be the shape of the workspace which you will get when we will ro rotate this manipulator arm using these three revolute joints that is the first revolute joint will be rotated by an angle theta 
the second will be rotated by an angle phi and the r3 will also be rotated by an angle xi r1 will, will be able to move this manipulator in the horizontal direction that is h whereas r2 and r3 will be able to move this manipulator arm in the vertical direction so together using r3 and r2 plus r1 we will be able to move this manipulator arm in both the directions that is vertical as well as horizontal and on doing so the workspace which you will get will look like this that is it will be the shape of the manipulator arm which you can see on looking at from the top so this is the shape which you will get of the workspace so guys these are the important coordinate systems which you will see when you will be dealing with uh, robots and its manipulator or we can say the manipulator arm and these are the important diagrams which you can refer to while learning about these coordinate systems and these are the all coordinate system which we will be discussing that is first we discussed cartesian then cylindrical spherical articulated and scalar robot we discussed over here only and we didn't go into much detail and this is how a scalar robot looks like it only moves in the horizontal direction as we discussed before so guys this is it for this video if you were able to understand how the robot coordinate systems are formed and how they look like then just write wow in the comment section and it would be great to know that you were able to understand it now guys this is it for this one see you in the next video